hello students so welcome back to chapter 1 part 4 now we'll be starting with finding out about craft production now in this underline from here chanhodlo this was one of the important sites where uh, craft production was taking place chanhodlo is a tiny settlement can leave one line devoted to craft production including bead making shell making metal making seal making and weight so this was one of the most important craft production center in the harappan civilization next point variety of materials used to make beads is come to first you can circle this stones like carnelian of a beautiful red color so this stone carnelian is a bit of a reddish color jasper crystal quartz and setatite so these are the different kinds of stones now we come to metals you can circle this metals like copper bronze and gold and shell under shell you can underline fans and terracotta or burnt clay next point come to the shapes were numerous disc shaped flat circular cylindrical that is hindi mein hum isko kahenge bellan aakar diya gaya hai usko spherical barrel shaped segmented next point some were decorated by encasing or painting and some had designs etched on them so these were some of the stones and variety of crafts taking place with these stones and giving them shapes in different forms like barrel shaped cylindrical spiral disc like shapes next point techniques for making beads differed according to the material so it dependent on the material what the shape of any product was in the craft production next point come to next paragraph grinding polishing and drilling completed the process next point specialized drills have been found at chanhodlo lothal and dholavi now when these craft productions were being produced they were being given shapes through grinding polishing or through drilling and these specialized drilled equipments have been found at chanhodlo lothal and at dholavira now coming to the next point come to next paragraph first line nageshwar and balakot nageshwar is in gujarat and balakot is in pakistan these are the next line come to the other line were specialized centers for making shell objects including bangles ladles and inlay which were taken to other settlements so any product which was being produced here like bangles ladles inlay they were taken to other um, other settlements next point finished products such as beads from chanhodlo and lothal were taken to large urban centers such as mohenjodaro and harappa so these craft production areas were mostly in small settlements and when any product was produced there made out there it was taken to larger centers such as mohenjodaro and harappa now we come to the next topic that is identifying centers of production so we will write a question out here first underline this archaeologists usually look for and before archaeologists write what so question becomes what archaeologists usually look for so what are the raw material sources what archaeologists look for to identify a craft center a production center first one now underline raw materials such as stone noodles whole shells copper ore tools unfinished objects rejects and waste material so this will be the sources for any archaeologist to understand a craft production center next point waste is one of the best indicators of craft work now why is the waste best indicator because mostly the material which is not a waste material may have been utilized but the waste material is still there and it was not utilized it was kept at the same craft center so if it is found then that shows that that place was used as a craft production if you can see this this is a terracotta figure one of the toys found in the harappan regions now come to the next page next point these traces suggest that apart from small specialist centers craft production was also undertaken in large cities such as mohenjo daro and harappa 
सो अदर देन स्पेशलिस्ट सेंटर्स सच एज लोथल बालाकोट नागेश्वर वेर स्प्राफ प्रोडक्शन वॉज बींग टेकिंग प्लेस इट वॉज ऑल्सो टेकिंग प्लेस एट मोहन जोदड़ो एंड हड़प्पा बट नॉट ऑन दैट मच ऑफ अ लेवल नाउ एज यू कैन सी दीज इमेजेस कॉपर एंड ब्रास वेसल्स दीज वर यूज मोस्टली फॉर द फूड प्रोडक्ट नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वी कम टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज स्ट्रैटेजीज फॉर प्रिक्योरिंग मटीरियल इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल अंडरस्टैंड हाउ हड़प्पन्स ब्रॉट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स टू मैन्युफैक्चर एंड बी यूटिलाइज इन दीज क्राफ्ट प्रोडक्शन सेंटर्स फर्स्ट पॉइंट वैरायटी ऑफ मटेरियल्स यूज्ड फॉर क्राफ्ट प्रोडक्शन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट क्ले वाज लोकली अवेलेबल नेक्स्ट पॉइंट स्टोन टिम्बर मेटल पिक्योर्ड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड नेक्स्ट पॉइंट टेरेकोटा टॉय मॉडल of bullockart cart suggest means of transporting goods and people across land routes so now what is happening clay was locally available but whereas stone timber and metal was procured from other areas and we find a terracotta bullockart model of a toy which suggests that it may, uh, land routes were used through bullockart for transportation next point river line routes along indus and its tributaries then right and coastal routes were also probably used so that means rivers were used as transportation and even coastal routes were used for transportations now coming to the next topic material from subcontinent and beyond so in this we will be studying about three ways the hadap underline this the hadapans procured materials for craft production in various ways so these various ways we have three ways first and uh, circle this established settlements so where the production was being taken place for example now underline established settlements right at nageshwar and balakot where shell was available next point right at then underline surtgai in afghanistan sources of lapis lazuli a blue stone that was apparently very highly valued and lothal which was near the sources of karnel from baruch in gujarat setatite from south rajasthan and north gujarat and metal from rajasthan so these were the areas which were in hadappan sites only and they were providing stone metals clay etc now we come to the next way of procuring material come to second line send expeditions send make it sending expeditions and circle this first in sending expeditions khetri region of rajasthan for copper south india for gold next point these expeditions established communications with the local communities so next point in khetri area come to next line archaeologists call the ganeshwar jodhpur culture with its distinctive north non hadappan pottery and an unusual wealth of copper so this khetri was in rajasthan it was almost near these hadappan sites but this archaeologist have deferred this that this region was totally different from the hadappan region or the hadappan civilization because of the distinct the differences in the pottery and because copper was really well available in khetri region whereas copper was not so much available in the hadappan sites so this ganeshwara jodhpur culture was totally different from the hadappan civilization after copper put a uh, comma and continue with this supplied copper to the hadappans now for the third way we come to the next top uh, page circle this contact with distant lands so contacts other than the subcontinents contacts with the other lands from away from hadappan sites recent archaeological finds suggest that copper was also probably brought from oman so present day oman is somewhere here and this is the hadappan civilization this is the arabian sea 
so copper which has been found at oman uh, sorry at hadapan site suggests that this copper was actually from uh, oman also so now we'll understand how do we get this source chemical analysis have shown that both omani copper and hadapan artifacts have traces of nickel suggesting a common origin so the copper trace the artifacts which uh, archaeologists have studied this is the copper in that is having a presence of nickel and this suggests a common origin come to next point we'll understand in better in the later points a large hadapan jar coated with a thick layer of black clay has been found at omani site so this kind of a jar has been found at oman and this suggests that this is a hadapan jar now coming to next paragraph mesopotamian text come to next line refer to copper coming from a region called magan perhaps a name for oman and interestingly enough copper found at mesopotamian sites also contain traces of nickel so as the mesopotamian civilization and the harappan civilizations are contemporary civilization and Mes products artifacts found at um, uh, mesopotamia also are suggesting that they are having a nickel presence in the copper artifacts and they traded with oman so even harappans are having a presence of nickel in the copper and this also suggests that harappans also got copper from oman so they were having trade relations with oman and the name used in mesopotamian text for the word oman is magan this word magan word has been used for oman in the mesopotamian script and this is very important now coming back to the points long distance contacts include hadapan seals weights dies and beads so long distance contacts for example there are many artifacts of the hadapan artifacts found in oman region and in mesopotamian region and same oman products are found in hadapan region as well as in mesopotamian region next point point mesopotamian texts mention contacts with region called dinmun probably the island of bahrain magan and melua possibly the hadapan region so melun is for bahrain magan is for oman and melua is a word used for hadapa by the mesopotamian text next point communication with oman bahrain or mesopotamia was by sea if the hadapans had any communications with oman bahrain or mesopotamia it was by sea next point mesopotamian text refer to melua as a land of seafarers we find depiction of ships and boats on seal so if you see the seals now what are we getting we are getting boats figures on these seals and this suggests that the hadapans had knowledge about the sea now come to this figure a round persian gulf seal found in bahrain sometimes carries hadapan motifs interestingly local dinmun weights followed the hadapan standard so now this is in bahrain and this seal is showing uh, almost seal similar to the hadapan seals and what is more important is dilmun which is known as bahrain had followed the same weights and uh, weight standard what the hadapans were following so this is showing that they may be trade relation that is why they were also following the same standard of weights what the hadapans were following now just go through these seals these seals are related to the hadapan seals 